Hello there, welcome to my quick little description on how to, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to use a, I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to use GDM in 6.3. It is a memory scanner slash hacking device tool that will allow you to cheat in video games and actually a lot of other pretty cool things that you can do with it. But for the most part, I'm just going to deal with games. At any rate, here we go. First thing you want to do is open up Cheat Engine 6.3. If you don't have it, go to Google and get 6.3. Or just search for that and you'll get to the website. Uh, next thing you want to do is have your game open. Uh, you can't, you know, hack a game if you don't have one. So here we go. Now, the first thing I'm going to try to hack here is going to be my attributes, uh, my attribute points. How about? Um, we have four currently. So I'm going to find a way to change that. So... Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll click on this little process button here that'll open my process list. And I want to select the Mountain Blade Warband.x process. Pretty simple, right? Uh, now, in the value box here, I'm going to type in 4, because that's my current amount. And then I'm going to do my first scan. Uh, worth noting that there are different types of values that this uh, particular one could be in. Uh, I'm, usually 4 bytes will work for most things. Um, if you can't find something, use try using all. Um, like if you can't find a certain value, try using all because it may have put it some other way. You can also try float. Uh, that's also another common way that they will try to hide values, or get program will try to hide the value of things. Um, you can also do different types of things like it's bigger than some number, or it's smaller than number, or it's a value between some number, or it's an unknown initial value. At any rate, so we'll do our first scan. Comes up pretty quick, got 400,000 values possible. Obviously far too many to try and guess at. So what we'll do is we'll spend one point. Now we have three. This actually works out like the old Game Shark did um, for Nintendo 64 way back. Or I think PlayStation did, I don't know. Not really. Anyway, so now we're down to 97 addresses, which is a pretty good number. Um, if, we use, if we lose one more point, we're down to two, and we have no address, or one address left, which is good, because that means we pretty much found the address. Uh, we can verify that by, you know, putting this at 10, or hell, just lock it too. If you hit active, it'll lock it at this value. I usually don't lock the dice, it can mess things up, but eh, you can risk it. At any rate, um, as you can see, it's locked the value at 10. It's always going to be 9 though when I'm using it because it thinks it's being, or thinks one's point is being used. So, um, that's the basics of how to use how to make a simple memory hack for any game. Um, the problem with this though, is if you do it like this, you're gonna have to keep doing it over and over and over. So once you find the value and you close the game and restart it, or even sometimes go to a different level, you'll not have the values you need. So in order to counteract that problem, uh, what you can actually do is, well, I'll just show you. It's easier to explain by showing you. So I'll close the game. Right now, this is goes, goes to question marks because the process has been closed, so it doesn't know what to be looking for, what address to look in, or it doesn't know what place to look in its address for. So, I'm opening up Mountain Blade again. Oh, yeah. Slowly opening. Minimize out of this for a second. There we go. And back to the thing. <coughs> a bit of a cough. All right, get some candy. Get some, I get some. I'll get some. All right, start a new game. So, gonna have to go back to that screen that we were just at. Meryl, Montreal, Page on the front, Squire, First Order Man, Counter Matcher, Blah. Blah, blah, blah. Great. All right, so there is my numbers back to the same place I was before. And I'll keep the current address list, but as you can see, oh crap, that address that I was using before. Must not be the right one because I definitely don't have that many skill points. So we'll have to do it over. So we'll go four for the first value like it was before. And we'll decrease it by one. Come here, make it three. Get it down again. Two. There's our value. Now this is a different address than the last one. So how do we fix that? Well, the answer is pointers. Basically, there's a there's these things called opcodes that tell that write to pointers and push the value to an actual address somewhere. Uh, kind of a crafty way to hide things, I suppose. But basically, what you want to do is come down here. Now that you've got the address down here, you want to find out what's writing to that address. So basically, instead of just looking at 
the thing in the address itself, you're looking for the source of that address, so what's actually writing to it. So if I come down here, change that, change the value, I get this little opcode that'll pop up in this window. And this opcode basically tells me that this that the thing at this address right here, this address, and I know this doesn't look like an address right now, but it is, <laughs> is being decreased by one, or decremented by one if you look down here. Um, what does all that mean? Well, basically, if you look at this right here, you have EDX plus EAX. What's EDX? EDX is this number right here, which is this address that I will search for in a second. It's actually this address here, um, plus EAX, EAX being nothing right now, and then plus this number here, which is in hex. So zero plus this number in hex will give me the address for the pointer as well as the offset for it. I know that seems confusing, but trust me, it's not that hard. So, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a new scan and we're gonna search in hex this time. And we're gonna use this right here. The value of the pointer needed to find, needed to find this address is probably 37C40024. So, we're gonna look at 37C40024 and we'll do a scan for that. Now we got two pointers that came up here, or two addresses that came up. Um, this isn't all that uncommon. It doesn't necessarily mean that one of them is wrong. In fact, both of these work. Why do they work? I don't know if I know, but they do. <laughs> Basically, when you put those addresses in to the pointer, into the pointer, plus the offset, they both go to the same address, which is going to be 37C402.4. Um, it's amazing how it works, but it does. So I can use either one of those addresses. Basically, I'm going to take this address here and plug it in to this here. So you had to go to an add address manually and click pointer. Now what you're going to do is type in one of those addresses. I'm going to use the highlighted one, which is 394D7F24. Now, this should show me, I think I put in, did I put in one too many numbers? 394D7F24. Yeah, I put in one, one too many numbers here. Okay, there we go. So, that shows me the base address that it's going to be writing to. But, there is an offset. Where do you get the offset? Well, like I said, right here. This highlighted red part right here is EAX plus 2C0. So, that plus EDX, which is this number here, which is the address right you know, if you, or, well, it's this one, you if you know, <laughs> basically you have to add these two things to make the offset. It's in hex, so if you pull out your either, if you know how to add hex numbers, because you're smart like that in programming, or, you know, just pull out your calculator about Windows and switch to programmer mode, that works too. But you type in the offset, which is 2C0. So I typed in 2C0, and I'll tell you what the value is, and I'll tell you the address. Up here, 37C402E4 matches the address that we have here, and it also matches the value. So we know this is the right thing. I'm going to call this uh, attribute points. Blah. So there it is. This is basically the exact same thing as that, only this is not the exact same thing. It's a pointer from one address that is the like the root address that runs the opcode to make that value or to find where you're going to put the value. So it's kind of confusing, but I'll show you that this actually does work. So if I close Mountain Blade again, and pop it, ah, pop it open again, and let it freaking load again. <coughs> a little bit of a cough, sorry. I could have probably moved the microphone, but I didn't. I didn't. I wanted you to hear the whole thing, just because. Deal with it. Anyway, uh, this is gonna load here any freaking second now. All right, there we go. Same thing as last time, start a new game, freaking continue, man, I'm pop it, double page, splat, blah, 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 okay, so, there we go. Now, we have to hook it back to Mountain Blade Warband, we want to keep the current address list, and wow, as you can see, this one up here that we had found before is not working anymore, but this address, the pointed to address, is properly working. So... We don't ever have to freaking hack this damn thing again. And in fact, if I believe if you were to do this on your computer, you'd be able to use the actually yeah, you would be able to. If you use the the address I just showed you, you could easily point to the exact same place and get the same 
thing, basically. So you could do the exact same hack without having to do all the work that I just did. But that's, you know, your prerogative. I would rather just redo it all myself. Be cool. Anyway, another cool thing about this is I know that this particular game, subs it likes to, um, what's it called? Divide all of its different things by, um, <laughs> by a certain number. I, I know the offsets for some of the stuff, but I know it likes to keep things off by about four. So the addresses are usually about four off once you find one. I know the offset for the strength attribute is 270, so I'm gonna pop that in there. I also know the I know the um, offsets for the rest of them are gonna be pretty close, like 274. And the next one's going to be 278. And the next one's going to be 27C. Now I'm going to say it again, I know that because I freaking do. <laughs> because I did this before, earlier, to verify that I was going to be able to do it without any issues. I wanted to pick a game that I could, you know, to demonstrate that I could do fairly easily. So, this is the one I picked. Now, as you can see, boom, all my attributes are now 500s. Pretty awesome, right? And uh, just in case you want to know why this is so much fun to do stuff like this, blah blah blah. Like in this game, you typically wouldn't be able to run like this damn fast, <laughs> which is pretty damn fast, right? Hell, I could probably change it, and make it even more ridiculous. And oh my gosh, my speed is freaking insane now. <laughs> I can punch people to death. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, that was fun. Anyway, so that's one of the reasons why you might want to cheat, is because you can do ridiculous things that normally would not be possible. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned a few things. Um, if you have any more questions about Cheat Engine or how to use it, feel free to leave a comment in the video or a comment on the video, and I'll get back to you when I do. But uh, that's it.